morning, everybody. Our Wednesday night Bible study, and um, let's see. This coming Monday, we're going to have our board meeting. I'm assuming, so uh, check with Jim, make sure. But this will be the second Monday coming up, right? As far as I know. And uh, uh, just a couple people. Um, as I was saying earlier, Betty Wilson, need to keep her in prayer. Um, and uh, um, John Keenan, his wife, the past. So we need to uh, continue to pray for that family. And uh, all right, well, let's uh, let's have a word of prayer, and then we're going to. To our Bible study and pick up where we left off last week. Father, we just want to thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord God, as we gather together in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, that you come to be in our midst. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who we have sent to uh, teach us, to lead us and guide us in all the truth, to open the word to our understanding. We thank you, O oh God, as you reveal yourself to us through your word and your spirit that we can come into a greater understanding of who you are, that we would know you better in ways that will transform our, our worship and our, our, our lives, our, our living, the, our, our views of everything, Lord God, that we will come into a, a, a deeper and a more intimate relationship with you uh, that will transform every area of our life. That we can be more pleasing to you and also uh, we would have a greater assurance, a greater faith, a greater trust in who you are, and a greater peace as we recognize how you are intricately involved in every area of our lives, and uh, you are always there, working and moving on our behalf. So I want to thank you for that. We uh, do want to lift up uh, Betty, Lord, as she is in the hospital, that you would just uh, be with her, Lord, and uh, bring a quick recovery, that you would bring a total and complete healing to her body, Lord, and everything that's going on, that uh, you would just divinely touch her in your mighty power and raise her up and restore her, O oh God, as a vital part of the body of Christ, and she'd be able to continue the things that you called her to do and be a part of. And Lord, we do uh, want to continue just to lift up the Keenan family, that you just surround them with your love and presence, that uh, uh, Lord, you just uh, comfort them and be with them. And uh, as you take them through this uh, time of grief and, and uh, just let them know, oh God, that uh, uh, you are there to watch over them and, and to strengthen their hearts and uh, just be with them in this time. Lord, we just want to commit this time into your hands and you will be glorified and uh, everything that is said and done, help us to see more clearly, to understand more fully and to come into that greater revelation of who you are. We thank you for that spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you better as you open the eyes of our understanding, Lord, to see the truths of your word and to receive them, to embrace them, and to walk out them in our lives. So Lord, we thank you for these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, we've been looking at the attributes of God, and uh, so far we, we've looked at uh, God being self-existent, God being immutable, he doesn't change. Uh, God being spirit, spiritual. Uh, God is a spirit which allows him to uh, do pretty much anything he wants. Uh, God is sovereign. Uh, ultimately, everything uh, is going to turn out according to God's will and purpose because he has designed everything according to his will uh, even before we existed. God is in complete control of everything taking place. Uh, God is uh, uh, omnipresent. Uh, we looked at that last week. And uh, tonight we want to look at God's omniscience. And uh, over these three weeks we'll look at His uh, uh, omnipresence, His omniscience, and His omnipotence, the three omnis, uh, which tell us a lot about God and His greatness and His, his power, and uh, which helps us in our walk uh, as we really understand how involved God is in everything to do uh, with not just creation, uh, but with our individual lives. So let's begin in uh, Psalms 
chapter 139, verse 1 through 4. He says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. So God being omniscient means that God is all-knowing. There is nothing in creation that escapes the view and the knowledge of God. Uh, man can't even uh, hide his thoughts from the all-knowing God, as he tells us here in Psalms. Uh, God knows our every thought. God knows uh, uh, things we're going to say before we even speak them. God already knows uh, everything concerning us. Uh, Andrew Murray, a uh, rather famous uh, evangelist, a missionary, uh, said this about God's omniscience. Lord, how terrible is thine omniscience for thine enemies. That eye which burns in heaven as a flame of fire is always upon them. They would fain flee away from it, but they are never able. But for thy people, thine omniscience is a comfort and a refuge. Thou art he who can help them against themselves and the deceitfulness of their own hearts. They invite thine omniscience to search their heart and to cleanse them from their secret faults. We find a lot of examples of God's omniscience is all-knowing in the Bible. Uh, a couple of examples, when we look at, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 5, when Ananias and Sapphira, uh, in their deception, were withholding their pledge from God. Uh, God knew it. He, he saw it all. He sees again. We have to understand, God sees our hearts. Not just what we actually do or actually speak. God sees our hearts. He sees our thoughts. He sees our motivations. And, and so we have an example of there that God saw the very thoughts and, and uh, motivations of Ananias and Sapphira, and he called them out. He, he judged them, and uh, uh, both of them died because of their deceitfulness uh, towards God. The Bible says that they lied to God. And so uh, we see that when we look at the seven letters to the churches in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, uh, that's one of the things that we, in our, our study of Revelations we, we also saw uh, that the Lord exposes both the acts of the church as well as their thoughts and motivations. And we see uh, Jesus revealed in Revelation as he who has eyes like a flame of fire who over and over tells the church, I know I know this about you. I know that about you. I know all about you, is what Jesus kept telling those churches. In 2 Kings chapter 5, if you remember Gehazi, the uh, servant of Elisha, uh, this was when Elisha uh, healed uh, uh, the leprosy of, of Naaman, and uh, uh, Naaman wanted to bless Elisha with some gifts. And Elisha said, no, we're not taking any gifts. This is, this is God's doing. And he sent Naaman on his way. And Gehazi figured, wow, you know, this guy's got stuff I can use. So he figured he'd sneak after him. And uh, after Naaman had gone down the road a ways, Gehazi took off and uh, saw him out and says, uh, lying to him, Oh, some, some uh, people came, uh, some sons of the prophets, I believe it was, came to Elijah. Can you give us some clothes and, and a little money for them to help them out? And so uh, uh, Naaman gave him uh, uh, some uh, silver and, and some clothing. And uh, guess what? Uh, God saw it all. And uh, God revealed it to Elisha. So when Gehazi got back. Elijah was like, where were you? And uh, what ended up happening was Gehazi got the leprosy of Naaman because of his sin. But 
basically we find numerous examples throughout the Bible showing that God sees everything. He's always watching, always looking, he's always involved. Now, God's omniscience includes his perfect knowledge of himself, whereby the Trinity fully knows one another. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, he says, Jesus, this is Jesus talking, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son will, wills to reveal Him. So here we can see that the Father knows the Son, and everything about Him. The Son knows the Father, and everything about Him. And then in John chapter 10, uh, 10 verse 15, he says, as the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. So we can see that this omniscience applies to the Godhead itself. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Paul brings the Holy Spirit into this, this omniscience. He says, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. In other words, nobody knows uh, all things about God. Uh, the Holy Spirit searches him out. And that's why Paul was talking about in chapter 2 that that's why we need the Holy Spirit. He's the one that reveals these things to us so that we can know the things of God and uh, uh, because, again, they're spiritual. So God has perfect knowledge of everything exactly as they are. There's nothing new to God and nothing that surprises God because He not only knows everything in the present, God knows everything in the past, and God also knows everything in the future. So God can't be surprised. God uh, uh, already knows the the, the, the beginning to the ending, the ending to the beginning. There's no misunderstanding with God. There's no confusion with God as with men because God sees everything with perfect clarity. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, he says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now, this not only applies to the fact that there's no sin in God, there is nothing wrong in God, there's no unrighteousness in God, but there's also no darkness in God. There's nothing that God doesn't know, nothing that God uh, has to have revealed to him. And uh, God knows it all. And so there's nothing new with God. God's knowledge is not clouded, is not in part, like with us. Remember what Paul talks about, uh, uh, we, we know in part now, until we see him face to face, then we'll, then we'll know fully, but right now we just know in part. But with God, he knows it all completely and perfectly, because again, there's no darkness in his knowledge or his understanding. Understanding this omniscience of God gives us perfect assurance when we pray, knowing that God's answer is going to come forth from His perfect knowledge of our situation as well of, uh, as His knowledge of our future, as well as His knowledge of everything that affects us and uh, will or does take place in our life. So in other words, when God answers our prayers, He does it based on a full and complete knowledge of where we're going, what's going to happen, everything that's going to affect our life. And so, like that old movie for some of us old-timers, Father Knows Best. Amen? That goes way back, I think, 50s, 60s, I know it's black and white, so... Before, a lot of people probably don't even know, there used to be no color TV. We used to have black and white. That was it. Uh, 
Uh, some of these younger kids don't understand all that. In fact, uh, some of them never see the dial phone. Uh, but, but God knows everything. And so when we pray, uh, rather than demanding what we want, we should settle for what God's will is because He's already searched everything out and His answer is going to be exactly what we need and a lot of times we're looking from our own limited point of view. We don't really know what we need because we don't really know uh, how our answer is going to affect our life. We don't really know what's coming around the corner even tomorrow or next week that could change everything. But God already knows. So uh, God wants us to trust Him uh, when we pray. And that's why uh, one of uh, the things that God tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, is based on the fact that God knows everything. He's omniscient. So he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now remember what we talked about before, God's uh, Jeremiah 20 and 11 tells us that God's thoughts towards us are for good and not for evil and to give us a future and a hope. So when we put these things together, we can trust God that whatever His will is is going to be for our best, it's going to be for our good, and it's going to result in what we need. And so God's knowledge is also eternal. God has known all things from the beginning of the world to the end of history, including every thought, every action of every individual. There's nothing that escapes the eye of God. In uh, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 and 10, he says, Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So here we can see both the omniscience of God, but also the sovereignty of God, that God has already planned out everything for His will to be accomplished no matter what happens. And again, we can see that, that God knows the beginning from the end. He, he knows all the past and all the future, and even things that have not yet come to pass, God assures us that His counsel will stand. Nothing can change the will and purpose of God. Um, in Romans, well, actually, where do I go here? When God takes his uh, uh, judgment seat, books will be opened with the history of every individual. No one shall be able to accuse God of injustice. Again, telling us that uh, God knows every detail about our lives. We looked at this in Psalms chapter 139. To remember, he tells us that all of our days were written before we ever existed, before we were ever formed in the womb. In uh, uh, Psalms 51, David acknowledges this. He says, against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. In other words, God seen everything that David did that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. In other words, nobody going to be able to stand before God in that day and say you made a mistake. Nobody can, can stand before God and say, God, you're unjust, this is unrighteous, this is not fair, because God has seen everything in the dark, in the secret, it doesn't matter. And, and again, he's seen every thought, every action, and so nobody will be able to blame God because God knows it all. Only the blood of Jesus can atone for our sins and wash them from us. 
God's omniscience means that all knowledge is within himself. He needs no instruction. God needs nobody to counsel him outside of himself because God alone contains all knowledge. Nobody can teach God or tell him anything he does not know. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13 and 14, who has directed the Spirit of the Lord or as his counselor has taught him? Who has taught God? With whom did he take counsel? Who instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge or showed him the way of understanding? Well, the answer is nobody. Because only God has all knowledge. In Romans chapter 11, verse 34, Paul says, For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Nobody can counsel God because nobody has the knowledge of God. God's knowledge is all-encompassing from the, from the greatest of things to the smallest of things with every detail. In other words, God knows not just big things, not just great things. God knows every little detail about everything. For instance, in Psalms chapter 147, verse 4 and 5, he says, He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and, and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. There is no limit. There is no end to the knowledge and understanding of God. And not only with creation, but Jesus tells us in Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 29 and 30, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. God knows every detail about everything. So we can see that uh, God is extremely involved with everything in creation, not just humanity, but the animals and the stars and the planets and everything that exists in creation. God is involved with all. He sees it all, he knows it all, he understands it all, and ultimately he directs it all. So it should be very comforting to us that, that God knows every detail of our lives, again, showing his involvement, his personal involvement with us. He knows our every need. He knows our every desire. He knows our every circumstance. And you can go on and on and on. God already knows all about it. In Psalms chapter 142, verse 3, this it should really be a blessing to us. The psalmist says, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me. In other words, when I got to this place of, what am I to do? Uh, you know, such great things coming against me. I just don't know what to do. I'm just overwhelmed. He says, then you knew my path. In other words, God knew exactly what was going on. Therefore, God knew exactly what I needed. God was there. God was on, uh, on the scene. God had everything in control. And basically, the psalmist is saying, even in the worst of times, we can trust that God sees us, God knows us, and God's going to help us. Remember Psalms 146. God says he is an ever-present help in trouble. That's the goodness of God. And then in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, he says, When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they'll be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask. God knows every need, and he's concerned about our needs. And he will meet our needs as we trust in him. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And uh, which in itself is a testimony of God.
God's grace, of God's mercy, of God's compassion, as He loves us and forgives us even in our imperfection. God's omniscience is infinite in scope, even into the future. As we said, He knows the beginning of all things, He also knows the end of all things. And again, because God knows the future, He perfect, uh, knows the future perfectly, He also plans for every conceivable uh, event to maintain His divine purpose for all things. I was talking about this a little bit earlier today. Uh, when you think about uh, this omniscience of God, uh, when you think about things in the Bible that take place in the Bible, when you think about things that uh, uh, take place even today in the world, how God has, uh, in, in His perfect knowledge, His perfect foreknowledge, His perfect knowledge of the future, how God is so involved in everything for instance, when you look at Jonah, when Jonah was cast into the sea, at the exact moment, here you are in this vast sea, I mean, we're talking about a big sea that he was in, in the midst of a storm, and Jonah is cast into the sea at the exact moment that a fish large enough to swallow Jonah and maintain him alive in his belly for three days to be in that exact spot at that exact time when Jonah is cast into the sea. Or when you think about when Jesus was born and he's brought to the temple and you have the, the priest who had been given a prophecy that he would live to see uh, the manifestation of God's salvation. And here he is. And you've got to remember these priests are on a rotation. They're not on duty all the time. They have a rotation. And you have to look at all the details of this thing. The, the, the timing of this man's birth. The, the timing that he is uh, made a priest. The timing that he is on duty. The timing of them bringing the baby to the temple to be dedicated. The timing of, of uh, the, 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 the lady that prayed uh, was praying for years. I mean, every single detail had to be uh, uh, put into place uh, way ahead of time in order to bring about this perfect uh, uh, c c everything coming together in perfect timing in, in a perfect plan for everything to fulfill what had been planned what had been prophesied what had been determined by God to be carried out and then when you think about the hundreds of prophecies concerning the coming of Christ how much went into that that every detail would be fulfilled at every exact moment with every exact person involved with every exact thing that had to take place? It, we, we can't even comprehend it. We, we just can't wrap our head around all those details and yet God uses all of that to bring about His perfect plan and will for everything to do uh, with not just creation, but we bring it down to our own personal lives, how God uh, or orchestrates everything to bring about His will and purpose for us. And so God has a plan for every conceivable event to maintain His divine purpose for all things. God's knowledge of the future works together with His wisdom to bring about those plans and purposes and everything He has foreordained for creation Everything is ordered by Him, including the redemption of His people, the building of His church, and His ultimate victory over all things and the establishment of His eternal kingdom. God has already worked out every detail. That means we can rest in Him and we can devote ourselves to just following Him and know that everything's going to be okay. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 through 10, notice what Paul tells us. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the for forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, in other words, everything had to be orchestrated according to God's perfect timing, God's perfect plan, God's perfect knowledge, God's perfect wisdom, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both of which, uh, which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. It's going to be done exactly according to what God has purposed, and everything has already been planned and set in motion to make sure these things come to pass the way that God has planned. In Ephesians 3, uh, 8 through 11, he says, To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. In other words, everything that God planned for our redemption was already designed before creation ever existed. God had already planned. Why? God already knew what Adam and Eve would do. God already knew what people would do. God already knew what every, every individual, whoever lived, would do in response. God already knew. He already planned these things. He says, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's an eternal purpose because it existed throughout eternity. That's again why uh, when you think about these things and, and, and try to comprehend uh, everything about this redemption, it goes way beyond our understanding. And so we just have to rest in Christ, rest in God, rest in His, His plan, His purpose, and rest in Him knowing that He is in, in control. God's knowledge extends not only into the past, the present, and the future, but God's knowledge also uh, uh, moves into the, extends into the realm of the possible. God knows what could have happened based on the action of everyone and everything which reveals the, the extent of God's sovereignty as well as in Him directing all things to bring about the outcome of His will. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 21, look what He tells us. Woe to you, Chorazin, and woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in, in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. In other words, God is telling us if they had moved in a different direction, it would have caused a different outcome. God even knows the possibilities of what takes place. I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. So God has knowledge even of the possible. So again, the more we see of the attributes of God, who He is, what he is about, what he is capable of, uh, everything about him, the more it awes us to cry out, what a mighty God we serve. And it ought to move us into a greater faith, a, a greater confidence, a greater assurance that as we said in Proverbs, we can trust God with all of our heart because he knows it all, and he has all power over everything, and uh, he's in charge of everything. And so we can trust him for these things, and we can trust him with our life, with our future, uh, with his will for us, with his plans, with his desires, and uh, 
that's all God's looking for from us. That we would just surrender ourselves, our thoughts, our minds, our bodies, our plans, our futures, that we would just surrender everything to Him, knowing that God is a good God. And again, as Jeremiah says, His thoughts towards us are for good and not for evil, for a hope and a future. And so uh, I'm being blessed by this study uh, because it just kind of makes you re-examine these things. And again, as we said at the beginning of this whole study, uh, what you think about God has everything to do about everything in your life. What you really think about God will determine everything you do. Your worship, your worldview, the way you live, the way you act, everything is determined about what you really think about God. And, and so this study is showing us more about God so we can know Him on a higher level. And hopefully that will bring us up to a higher level in our relationship with Him. So uh, next week we will pick up on the third omni, the omnipotence of God. The God is all powerful. There's nothing more powerful than God. So let's pray. Thank you, Father. Lord, we are just in awe when we begin to grasp how great you are, how infinite you are, how high and above you are over everything in creation, how you have worked out every detail in creation to the degree that we cannot even comprehend the extent of it. And yet at the same time, when we begin to see as great, as big, as mighty you are, you are still so intimate, so personal, involved in every detail of us individually, of even the very things of creation, the birds of the heavens, everything in, in, in this earth is before you. You see it all. You know it all. You, you are involved in it all. God, what can we say but you're a mighty God and we bless you, we thank you, we surrender to you. Lord, we we confidently come before you to cast ourselves wholly and completely upon you because you are everything we need and you are the perfect and good Father that cares about us and that loves us and is there for our good and not our evil, that we can have a hope and a future. So, Father, I pray that as we continue to learn more about you, that your Holy Spirit will illuminate us with the truths that will transform us and bring us into that deeper place in you, bring us into that right understanding where we see you the way you are and it will transform our lives in every area that we will worship you for who you are, that we will, we will live for you for who you are, we will order our lives according to who you are, we will have a perspective based on you and who you are, that every area of our lives will be impacted by who you are. And that we can absolutely trust you with every facet of our lives, with every part of our future. That we can truly rest in you. We can truly be at peace in you as we keep our minds stayed upon you. That even in the midst of the storms like Peter, even in the midst of the chaos around us, even in the midst of everything going on in this earth, as we stay focused on you, Lord, we know that we're in good hands. We know that we are safe. We know that you are with us, that you know our path, even when we are completely overwhelmed 
you see and know and care for us. And so we can trust you, believe you, and move safely forward with you. God, give us all a greater heart after you to continue to seek you and pursue you like none other and continue to grow in you, to grow in the knowledge of you as your Spirit reveals you to us. And Lord, we just thank you for these things. We thank you, O oh God, for your great works. We thank you as we go out of this place and continue to watch over us, protect us, and keep us. We thank you for meeting our needs and being with us each individually. We thank you for your will done, your kingdom coming in us and through us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God.